Hello everyone. Welcome to our channel ISC Steno. We are starting the passage at speed of 80 words per minute. Start. On behalf of the Indian National Commission and myself, I extend a very cordial welcome to Mr. Border, Director General of UNESCO on the occasion of his first official visit to India. The welcome is greater as we have been expecting him since last year and the disappointment felt at his inability to fulfill his engagement then has accentuated our pleasure in finding him in our midst today. We welcome him not only because he is the Director General of UNESCO but also because of the personal contribution he has made both before and since he assumed that office towards the furtherance of peace through education. His work in rural adult education in Mexico won the appreciation of the screening critics all over the world. Ever since he assumed office as Director General he has given a new impetus to the program of fundamental education and the service of underdeveloped areas. I have every hope that his present tour of India, Ceylon and Pakistan will establish closer bonds between UNESCO and these countries and lead to greater efforts in the cause of education for peace and unity. UNESCO is one of the specialized agencies of UNO which was established to achieve international unity and peace. We must, however, confess that world unity on the political plane is still a distant goal. The world organization which have been set up to achieve political unity whether as the League of Nations or the United Nations organization have not yet achieved anything that can rekindle the hopes of men. UNO founded to solve all political problems in a spirit of equity by remaining free from entanglement with power blocks is unfortunately itself becoming a victim of power politics. The conflicts between nations that formerly mark the field of diplomacy are now often displayed in the deliberations of UNO. How can we then hope that UNO will succeed in its aims unless it can distangle itself from the fact of political groupings and judge all questions from the point of view of international justice and peace while aware of the present shortcomings India is nevertheless a staunch 
supporter for world peace is so precious and objective that we cannot give up any instrument which offers even a remote hope of achieving it and what instrument of world peace can there be other than uno if therefore is this troubled world we can find any gleam of hope for unity and peace it can be only through the activity of unesco unesco rightly recognizes that all conflicts originate in the mind of man and hence it is in the minds of men that the basis of peace must be built the emphasis here is on the cultural unity of mankind to which different countries and different peoples have made their contribution in unesco one may therefore forget that clashes of take success and live in an atmosphere where representatives who oppose one another in the uno can cooperate in creative effort i may cite as an instance the political differences which have divided our country from south africa india has rightly sought the help of uno to remove discrimination and racial inequality that prevail in south africa but in unesco we find that the representatives of south africa cooperate with the representatives of india in advancing the cause of education science and culture education is basic to the creation of an atmosphere in which human beings can meet one another on a plane of friendship and equality and we are particularly happy that the direction of unesco is today in the hands of one who has identified himself with the furtherance of these ends mr director general you will perhaps agree with me that man and woman of the present generation have been brought up in an atmosphere of such national exclusiveness that they cannot be expected to achieve world unity and world citizenship easily they have been trained to think on lines which make it difficult to transcend the limitations of race class or nationality if therefore we are to achieve world unity and all agree that without such unity the future of man is dark all our efforts must be concentrated to educate the future generations for world citizenship if from their earliest days the children of today are trained to think of one another in terms of unity and brotherhood they will when they grow up develop an attitude of mind in which the present conflicts will become unnecessary and unreal i also hope mr director general that you will agree with me that for achieving this end the entire 
method of teaching history and geography in schools must be changed till this has been done there can be no hope of achieving a real unity of purpose among the peoples of the world and without such unity there can be no world citizenship the way in which we teach history and geography today very much militates against this objective stop Thank you.